In this episode, we will finish the airplane, experience catastrophic failure, and fly again. This is third episode of building this airplane from scratch, so make sure to check them out. So the wings are done, with the fuselage remaining. The goal of this fuselage is to verify if it's gonna handle belly landings. As I can no longer get foam board, so I will try Depron, which is lighter, but not so strong. So it's gonna be a little guinea pig. Boxy shape, nothing fancy so far, but very easy to build. It will be good enough to verify if the plane flies, how the wing perform, and so on. As you can see, I printed out templates for outer and inner wall, so it's gonna be like a sandwich. The inner wall has an offset about the thickness of Depron, which is 6mm. It's gonna make a good guideline to precisely glue the other parts around and resulting in bigger surface area to glue. Both sheets are glued with Gorilla Glue, or you can use hot glue. The perimeter wall is taped on those spots that are supposed to be bended, so Depron won't snap. Using hot glue, I proceeded to glue each segment individually. I also have to reinforce the bottom with another sheet of Depron. With this arrangement, the glue joint makes a nice, stars like shape and the area for the glue is way bigger. The bottom of the fuselage now feels definitely stronger. Here's the wing and tail mount assembly that will be glued in. Before that though, I need to dry fit everything and pre-balance the entire airplane so the mount assembly is on the correct spot. Everything that affects the weight distribution is mounted and placed in the fuselage. The motor and prop are taped on its position. This is just a simple fulcrum, using smooth rod and rolling the plane over to find approximate early CG, and leaving some margin for component shift for fine tuning. Now hopefully at the correct position the mount assembly is glued in. Another sheet of Depron goes on the top and the entire fuselage will be tapped over with black tape so it will provide additional strength. I made few cutouts for the rubber bands and also access point for the electronics. The final sheet of Depron goes for the front hatch. Each corner is sanded to match the counter and is ready for taping. Boring job, so I will speed it up. Under the LED lights it's gonna look seriously ugly as the tape reflects the light, but on normal soft light it's gonna look fine. So the taping is done, now to cut out the front hatch using templates. After that it will require to tape over the edges and some extra tape inside for the hinge. This very hot hatch is being attracted by two flat magnets, making my life easier so I don't need some sort of locking mechanism. With the access to the fuselage again, I can start working on the motor mount. My initial plan was to make the hole big enough for air intake, but the plan has changed for dedicated port that won't be obstructed by the motor. The motor mount is made from plywood and I glued the skewer to help me visualize the truss line while gluing the mount inside. It's about 2 degrees down and right. Aluminum mount is also a good option that provides more adjustment for the truss line just by bending. Or you can also use screw washers. Final cut will be for the air intake using 3 mil Depron, hot glue and tape. Now to run the servo bias through the boom for the V-tail. Better use some thicker wires because for the length, the smaller the diameter, the higher the resistance, the higher the voltage drop. And I want maximum power for the small servos I got there. Remember this moment. Small servos. It's gonna be important later. I was thinking about DIY custom harness to reduce the amount of wires, but instead I improvised to show how to use short servo wires in case you don't have a long ones. The connector will fit through the boom only after the outer socket removal. It has a notch inside, but I just cut it off. Secure with the tape and it fits there perfectly. The tail now looks almost wireless. To verify the connection is good, I will run the servo tester for 5 minutes. For the control linkage, I love these joints. Very quick assembly and precise adjustment. The nut is not tightened much, I just glued the threads at the end so it won't come loose. I got them super cheap from Aliexpress and they are really good quality. Few words about the power plant, I ditched the idea about 15 inch prop. It has too much stress that will reduce efficiency in an ideal cruise speed that has to be found for this airframe. I don't wanna be just floating little about stall speed. I need to find a prop that will be spot on for optimal motor efficiency, diameter just for enough thrust and pitch for the ideal cruise speed. For now I will just use my standard APC 12x6. 
My SpeedyB flight controller has not arrived yet, so I will do my maiden crash without it. Instead, Matek Crossfire to PWM, Express Alores R ceiling, and Skywalker 40 amp speed controller. Here's the entire plane ready to take off. I mounted the Fox here and FPV camera on the hatch with Velcro tape. Unlike symmetrical airfoil, on camber airfoil the center of pressure moves with the angle of attack, so I balance the plane somewhere between 25 to 33 percent. Anyway, let's toss it and see what happens. Go in nice and level, quite stable, and suddenly my day. Elevator, got stuck. Let's see it again. There was nothing else to do but to accept it. I managed to switch into emotionless mode and went to recover what remained. And what happened? The small servos in the tail could not handle the forces and got stuck, so that was the reason I could not recover from the dive. The airplane did not react at all to my elevator input. The servos had some signs of stuck in the rain bench test under load, but I was just totally stupid assuming there won't be that much of force if I use mechanical advantage. Anyway, let's proceed to the successful maiden. I made a new fuselage, replaced all the servos, received some goodies from Banggood and this bee, Speedy Bee, which I put in a nice 3D printed case to make it well protected. The power wires are also free of strain, plus in case of crash the chance to rip off the solder pads is minimal. So let's go for the maiden flight 2.0. Look at the plane, looks like nothing happened before. I will do a separate video about IDA settings, but for now let's do auto launch procedure and finally fly. Three knots, runway three 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 for takeoff. Have a nice day. Three three, runway three three after the departure. One two eight eight zero five seven seven. We shall go bye bye. So this is how it looks when your tail servos are working properly. It was climbing nice and stable, but honestly on this maiden I was really nervous and I couldn't even calm down after seeing the plane actually flies, so I was careful with it. However, the feeling on the sticks was very nice. Even though the plane responded to each input, I would say it was too stable. And even with the boxy fuselage, it seemed to be very efficient. I didn't want to go low with the airspeed on Maiden, especially with the stress I got, but few times I seen the airplane can fly on very low amps. I felt that on this battery I could do like 45 minutes of flight, maybe more. I will have to test it next time. You can also hear a few bang angle callouts from my radio. The main wing also performed well. The lift coefficient is very good and during landing I really felt it wants to float. I had to push it down even on low throttle. Now when I know it flies, next time I can mount a better FPV camera and transmitter. Let's have a look on the landing. And once again from the plane's perspective. Kelaman 396, proceeding into about the gate, from a one extended place of the wind is 210, 14, gust 20. Clear land, one extended, Kelaman 396. The plane has been recovered. No damage to the field, no damage to the plane, and I'm really happy how it flies. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts in the comments, leave a like and I will appreciate if you will subscribe to my channel, take care and I will see you next time.